Okay, hello. I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is my 2025 Hobonichi Cousin setup. I think this is my fifth time using this planner. It is the love of my life. It is the longest relationship I've ever been in. And although this year I did look at some other options um, and I tried the Hobonichi Cousin Avec, which is essentially the same thing, but um, it's split down the middle into January to June and July to December. Um, but I'm going back to the trusty original Hobonichi Cousin. Rapid fire before I get started. What are my thoughts about the Hobonichi Cousin Avec versus the full year? Functionally, the Avec is definitely better in my opinion because you start with a fresh book in the middle of the year. Um, it's not going to get super heavy and chunky by the end of the year. You also get to set up a new notebook in the middle of the year and it's just a really great fresh start sort of feeling. Uh, however, in my brain, it just makes more sense for the entire year to be in a single book. This is totally just a personal preference. The second thing that I get asked a lot is, why do I usually get the Japanese version instead of the English version? And again, this is just kind of like a thing that makes sense in my own brain. Hobonichi is a Japanese company. Um, their books have always been in Japanese and they only started releasing the English version a few years ago. And to me, it just looks a little bit off. Like even though I can read the English, but I can't read this, the English version just doesn't look right to me. Okay, let's get started. Unlike last year, I didn't film the entire process of setting up just because I honestly just wanted to enjoy myself a little bit, but I did show some of the key points. Hobonichi sells covers on their website, but you have to be careful because they only sell cover on cover, which means you have to purchase one of their cloth covers or leather, whatever, cover it around your book and then put the clear cover on the cover. And it doesn't work on the book itself. Well, I've never tried it, but I assume it's way too big. So what I purchase every year is the Midori A5 Codex cover. It's relatively affordable, I think less than 10 bucks. Uh, but again, you have to be careful because they have the A5 Codex cover and the A5 notebook cover. And the notebook cover works for the Avec, which is a thinner notebook, but it is way too tight on the full year. The codex is perfect for the full year. Um, it has a lot of room on the spine. In fact, it is a little bit roomy at the beginning of the year, but as you chunk up your planner throughout the year and it kind of expands, um, it becomes a perfect fit. So again, Midori A5 codex. So this is how I decorated my cover. I always get so nervous about how I want to decorate my cover. Uh, it sounds really dramatic, but this is a cover that I'm going to look at every single day for a full year. So I want it to look nice. For the past few years, I have been following a pretty similar formula of putting down the yearly vinyl sticker. And then I pick out some of these foiled sticker seal stickers. And this has been my decoration for, I think, since the beginning, actually. But um, for this year, I wanted to do something a little bit different and I started with this vision of taking this um, Helen's sketchbook vellum and I cut it into strips and I wanted to make the cover like a striped pattern. In my head, this looked a lot better. Uh, but my execution wasn't very good. I don't know what is off about it. Maybe the stripes are too wide, maybe the spacing wasn't very good, I don't know. Uh, but I actually did this like three weeks ago. I hated it so much and uh, I put it in the little paper bag that it came with and I put it aside for the next two weeks because I just, I couldn't look at it. Again, I know this sounds really dramatic, but um, anyways, last week I decided to come back to it and I was trying to think of different ways I can fix this situation. And I have realized that a lot of my good ideas come when I'm on the Stairmaster. So I had this sudden idea of just covering up the entire cover with random scraps of paper of all different textures and different patterns. So I found scraps of printer paper, 
um, like envelopes from greeting cards, a piece of Stalogy grid paper, even envelopes from my store. And I still wanted to incorporate the Helen's sketchbook vellum. Uh, so I also ripped up a few pieces of those. I also had watercolor paper and a little snippet from a Cezanne magazine. I did pay a lot of attention to the placement and where each of the pieces would go, but the, the good thing about something like this is it's very, very hard to mess up. Um, worst case scenario, you just cover it up. And yeah, I think it turned out really, really cool. I, I love all of the different textures. And I just took another 2025 vinyl and stuck it on top. That is the one thing that I want to keep consistent across all of my all of my setups. And then for the back cover, I sometimes do a piece of vellum like this, um, but because the front cover of this is already like patterned paper, I decided to go with covering it up with vinyl stickers. I just brought out a bunch of vinyls and shifted them around. Um, this embarrassingly took a very long time, uh, especially to get the spacing correct. I ended up going with I Heart Books, I Heart Roasted Bean Water. Um, this pen and paper snob one is one of my new favorites, but um, this is coming for Black Friday, so it's not available yet, but I think this depicts me very well. Uh, and also this blob mode emoji, the struggle bus, a creative mind. I turned the ink bottle doodles on its side. I also put down this fountain pen, but it was a little bit too wide, so I just snipped off the end. And then I think with all of my setups this year, I'm gonna add a nutrition facts final at the back. I think it is very fitting. Um, and then because there was a lot of empty spaces, I just went in with a regular Sharpie marker and I added some sparkles and little dots and uh, like steam marks everywhere. So that is the gist of my cover. I also talked about this in my Hobonichi Weeks video, but um, in all of my planners, I'm gonna put down this craft label. It says belongs to, and I just lettered in my own name. I always like to add some sort of pocket in my setup um, just to hold the current sticker sheets that I'm using. So in the July to December book, I had this idea of creating this vellum pocket, but in previous setups, I would also use things like adhesive pockets. I do think I prefer the vellum pocket just because it can fit the larger kit sheets as well. This is actually really easy to do. Um, you can use a piece of vellum or some patterned cardstock. The first step is to fold it in half. In the case of our vellums, it is already pre-folded. Next, you want to determine how wide you want the pocket to be. And then to that number, you want to add two centimeters to form the flaps. So for example, if you want the pocket to be 10 centimeters wide, you want to trim the vellum down to 12 centimeters wide. You might also want to trim down the vellum a little bit to make it the height that you want. Then using a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife, you want to snip the flaps only on the folded part so that you can separate the flaps. This part is optional, but just for aesthetic purposes, I cut the flaps at a diagonal angle um, so that it's not visible from the outside when you fold it in. Then taking some form of adhesive, I prefer tape runners, add some adhesive on the flaps and then you can secure it on either side of the page. As you can see, I messed up a little bit and I made my pocket a little bit too wide so that it was sticking out of my notebook. So I went back and folded the flaps in a little bit more so that the pocket is a little bit smaller. And you are left with this page that has pockets on both sides and it is very handy. I lettered a quotation on a sticky note, ripped off the empty spaces and taped it on here. I also used one of these foiled stickers to fill up some empty spaces. And for this one, I, I put down this vinyl that says, I do not know what I'm doing. This page, I just kept it very simple and I put down the craft paper version of the 2025 vinyl. Okay, and then this is the year at a glance page, which I really do not use at all throughout the year. There are definitely functional ways that you can use the year at a glance page. Um, maybe if you want to like 
use color coordinated markers to highlight certain dates or something but for me it's not necessary and one thing that I, I suppose I have come to accept is that I don't need to stress about making every every page a functional page. Sometimes it is okay to just leave it as is and ignore it. But one thing that I do to customize it still is I use the Year at a Glance calendar stickers. Um, I have these digitals available for free in my Facebook group as downloads. If you have a printer, you can totally um, take the downloads and resize them for your own planner. I do sell pre-cut sticker versions in my store if you're interested. Okay, and then moving on to the perpetual calendar section. So this is what my perpetual calendar looks like for this year. I have a color code system to track my daily steps and then I have a column for all of my workouts and then I have a column for like appointments and birthdays events throughout the year and then at the bottom i have this um this little chart for my steps and my averages as i mentioned in my hobonichi weeks video which this is going to be my fitness health and fitness planner for next year um, i transferred the step count and the workout tracker to my hobonichi weeks so i don't need to track this in my hobonichi cousin anymore what I was going to do is just leave this as a perpetual calendar and jot down birthdays, events, etc. But I was really reflecting on my year and I honestly just never looked at this. The only time I opened this page was to either track my workouts or I needed to add in stuff but never to actually reference anything, if that makes sense. So I decided that it was kind of pointless to keep this as a perpetual calendar. And what I'm going to do instead is make this an index. I don't have an example to show because I haven't started, but hopefully I can explain this. So for example, um, on this day, I had this idea to build my mom a bread slicer. I know it's really random, but I just made this sketch of my plan. So for things like ideas or maybe a list that I made, um, brainstorming, and I want to refer back to it in the future, I plan to write it down on the coordinating day. So um, this was September 9th. So on the line of September 9th, I might write something like bread slicer plan or something like that. So I can quickly refer to the page that I need in the future. I think this is a great addition to adding some more functionality uh, in my planner. At the top, I just put down these little star tiny icon stickers which I thought is a really cute touch. And this is where I'm gonna put down my three goals for the month at the beginning of the month. And then at the bottom here, I split it in half. This top part is gonna be for birthdays, big events, stuff like that. And then for the bottom space, I decorated with the large doodle stickers and the themes coordinate with each of the months. And this is where I want to write down just a little blurb, maybe summarizing the month or uh, talking about the highlight of the month. Moving into this section, this is where we encounter the very first planner tab. Um, and I suppose this is where I will talk about the tabs. I think I have like 14 new tabs coming in November. Um, this is what the format looks like. This is the Milky Coffee colorway. And what I used was the gunmetal and French lavender. I picked these two because I thought um, this is a very pale purple, so it works well with the French lavender. And then the gunmetal is like very dark, and I think it works well with the sketchy look. With the Avec, what I do is I make the weekly tabs at the top, and then the daily tabs at the bottom. But with the Hobonichi Cousin full year, you cannot fit two sets of 12 tabs um, across the length. So what I did was I started with the monthly tab and then I just did my daily tabs directly underneath. So it's aligned. I hope that makes sense. 
I think you can see pretty clearly how I do the tabs, but just as a very quick explanation, each of my tabs are lightly scored in the middle so that you can easily fold it over in half. There is also a lighter portion and a darker portion, and that is where you want to align it with the edge of the paper so that all of the tabs stick out the same amount and it is perfectly straight. To get the spacing correct, I just use the previous tab as a guide, and I also stick a piece of paper or something underneath the sheet that I'm tabbing, just because this allows for me to see the edge of the paper very clearly. This is definitely tedious, and it takes up quite a bit of time, so I would just um, play some music or something. Okay, so for the monthly section, of course, I am using my own Hobonichi Cousin kits. I just put down the decorative box, the monthly label, all of the days of the week labels, as well as the six dots. Here's an example of what my monthly spreads look like. I add in important events, um, deadlines, important deliveries. For the dots, I just put down highlights or important things that happened during the month. For the bottom, I'm just using the washi strips. And I put down all of the base layers for all 12 months, which took a very long time and it was very tedious. But um, I know myself, if I don't do this, I will never use this multi section. So I kind of saw it as setting myself up for success for next year. I accidentally ripped a little bit of November though. Okay, so that is it. They do give you some extra months. Then we have the weekly section, which uh, I don't really have anything to show. Um, I plan on using it the exact same way I do now. For the sidebar, I'm going to track the habits, some highlights of this week. At the top, I will either do a little bit of stickers or some washi tape, and then the rest is going to be relatively uh, simple, I think. A mix of tiny icons and regular stickers to time block my schedule. I have really been satisfied with this setup this year, so I, I don't plan on changing it for next year. And then moving on to this page, before the start of the daily section, they give you like an empty grid page. And this is where I'm going to write my letter to myself. Um, I did this last year. This was my letter to 2024 Helen from 2023 Helen. So um, I'm going to move it to the front here. I think it makes a little bit more sense. And I think this is a perfect space for that. I'm going to do this towards the end of the year, so in December. At the beginning of every month for the daily page, there is kind of like an empty title page and I never really had a purpose for them. Some ideas are like current books you're reading, current favorites, a monthly habit tracker, stuff like that. It just never really stuck with me. For next year, I first used the large monthly page um, and I took the ripped papers. I kind of just enclosed the space with all of the different pieces and I also use the doodles to add a little bit of decoration. And what I plan to do in the center is I am going to print out my monthly journaling prompts just on regular printer paper and stick it in the center. This way I don't have to go on my own website and search for my prompts every single morning because that's what I currently do. It'll just remove a little bit of friction from my mornings to have all of the prompts taped in here and ready to go. I will show you all of them. So that is all for the daily pages. I think it'll be nice to start off each month with some new artwork. And as for the actual daily pages, um, there's really no change. If you are new to my channel, you can watch some of my other videos. But the, the general format is this left column is for my routines, work to-dos, life to-dos. I start my morning by answering a prompt at the top 
and then the rest of the space is just for journaling and check-ins throughout the day sometimes it might be notes or brainstorming i don't really limit myself there this has been more or less my layout for actually since the beginning so um yeah nothing really to talk about there and then for the note pages i do have some exciting things that i want to try for this year or rather for 2025. Um, the first thing is a fruits and veggies page. I got this idea from Randy and it's kind of silly but I think it'll be fun. Basically, I'm gonna take the produce sticker. Every time I eat a fruit or vegetable that has a produce sticker, I'm gonna take it and stick it in here and I will write down the date and what it is. So for example, October 25th, Granny Smith Apple. November 2nd, avocado. What is the purpose of this? Nothing. I just think it's kind of fun and not everything has to be super functional. Okay, so I do eat a lot of fruits and veggies, but I don't know how much space to leave for this. So I have this page, this and this. Um, these two pages I'm gonna leave for making my checklist. So when I work on my 2026 monthly collection, which I just got goosebumps. I don't want to think about that right now. I usually like to make a grand progress checklist in my planner. And then this last page is going to be for, this is going to be for my empties, which is another new thing that I want to try. I divided the page in half and I'm just going to list out all of the, as the name suggests, product empties throughout the year. So things like um, lotion, toothpaste, Maybe I finished a box of tea, stuff like that. There isn't like a super functional purpose, but I think it'll be interesting to see um, what things I get through throughout the year. Um, also, like how, how often do I go through a tube of toothpaste? You know, for the timetable, I haven't set it up yet, but I'm going to do something similar to um, some of my members in the Facebook group. I will post some screenshots. Basically, with the monthly kits, I provided some marker suggestions with the Tombow dual brush pens. Just for easy reference, I'm going to swatch them here in the timetable so that I can refer to it whenever. Um, but I will do that. I will do that later. This might be my favorite part. Uh, so I have never used the graph paper that is included. I just, I never had a purpose for it. Again, someone in my Facebook group put out the idea of weighing your planner at the beginning and end of the year. And my brain immediately went to this graph paper. So I made tick marks and this is January through December. This is gonna be the weight at the very beginning. This is gonna be the weight at the very end. Uh, and then for the weight, I went from 450 grams, which is the weight of the book only. And then this is up to 950 grams. And each of the little grid is, I think, increments of 20 grams. So yeah, I think this will be really fun and interesting to document throughout next year. And someone on Instagram made a remark about how I'm feeding my planner different stickers and washi tape, which I thought was just so brilliant. I am very tickled by this. This is the My 100 section, which um, I've mentioned previously, you can use it to do pen swatches, track books you read, movies you watch, goals, stuff like that. Um, for me, what I have been doing is, for My 100, I am making it a My 100 Reasons to Keep Going. I don't want to make this too serious, but I do have periods of my week, month, year, whatever, where I really struggle with life. Um, so I started doing this thing where I make a list of, again, a hundred reasons to keep going so I can always be reminded of things that I still have left to do in my life and things to look forward to, etc. And it's a mix of serious things, but also silly things. For example, I want to watch my nephew, Luca, grow up. I guess an unserious thing is I want to I wanna plant my own potatoes one day. I want to try dosa, make emoji plushies, buy dad his dream car. You get the gist. I haven't done so yet, but at the very end of the year, I'm going to go through this list and I'm going to check off things that I was able to do this year. And then I'm going to transfer everything that's left or whatever is relevant into here and then I will add more to the list and the idea is that 
I am never going to let this list go under 100. I have talked about this several times already, but just very quickly, I had this idea to place a sticker release paper on the back cardstock. All you have to do is whenever you finish a sticker sheet, take off the top layer and you're left with a page of sticker release paper. And I just used a tape runner to stick it down here and I put in all of my most used stickers so I can grab one whenever I need. Really handy for planning on the go. And I just lettered stickers underneath here. The very last part is this protect your piece vinyl. I think it is just a really good reminder throughout the year. And I have already talked about the back cover. So that is it for my 2025 Hobonichi Cousin setup. I am definitely biased, but I think um, the setup is a good mix of fun, silly things, and also a lot of like functional elements. I am really, really excited to start planning in this planner, and it is honestly kind of a torture to wait the next two months. Anyways, I hope you were able to take some inspiration from this video, and uh, I will see you next week. Goodbye, and take care.